How many All-Americans will Penn State Wrestling have? How many individual champions can they break the team points record set by Iowa in 1997? With Carter Storacci back in the lineup for NCAAs, they can and will make history out in Kansas City. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Penn State Wrestling has lofty goals, lofty expectations at the 2024 NCAAs, but I think they can accomplish them. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, and thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started part two of this ncaa tournament preview and the voice of penn state wrestling jeff byers is here to do that before we actually get back to the individual weight class breakdowns i want to start off part two with the idea that we've been discussing all season jeff on these select episodes and what penn state can actually accomplish set those goals set tournament records the points scored the points scored by iowa in 1997 getting 10 out of 10 all americans which has been which has been done before, but Penn State, can they check that box as well? And then how many individual champions? Can they get four? Can they get five and tie the record? Could they get six and break the record? Let's start with that one. Six individual champions. It might seem like, well, that's that's a lot. You know, Penn State is good, but they're not that good. Well, Jeff, I know you would sit here and agree with me. They have, I, it's no disrespect to you know, wrestlers like Aaron Nagal, Tyler Kasak, Bernie Truax, because they just have diff- difficult brackets and where they're seated. So the paths are just a little more difficult. But then you have your heavy favorites, the number one seeds, Levi Haynes, Carter Storacci, Aaron Brooks, Greg Kirkley. They're all self-explanatory. But then you have Mitchell Messenbrink. You have Bo Bartlett. You have Braden Davis, true freshman number one seed, but people aren't exactly putting him as an overwhelming favorite. So seven Penn State wrestlers have a legitimate shot to win an NCAA title and bring that trophy back to Happy Valley State College. Yeah, I actually think it, it's even uh, more than that. I, I I truly believe they have nine wrestlers that are legit national. Right, so I'm underselling them here. Contenders th- this year because I, I think Tyler Kasak is right there, and I think Bernie Truax mm. uh, is also a guy that, w- with the way he's being coached up, uh, has a chance uh, as well. Now, I'm not sitting here – predicting or telling you that Penn State is going to have mm-hmm. nine national champions. I do think Penn State has nine legitimate contenders and 10 really strong All-America candidates yes. uh, for sure. So, you know, you have four number one seeds. Obviously, they are, you know, in contention for the national title. And the two number two seeds are also in contention. And as you said, Carter Storacci, although a nine seed, is certainly going to be viewed as a title contender at 174. Yes. So you have seven guys um, who are either seated in the top two or have won mm-hmm. uh, multiple national titles already in their career. So, you know, you can't say it'd be shocking to see any of those seven in the finals. And again, speaking from Penn State's perspective, it won't be shocking if Tyler Kasak or uh, Bernie yes. Truax find themselves there as well. So does Penn State have a chance to get uh, at least uh, five champions to tie the record or or get six? Yeah, there's a chance. Now, again, a lot of things have to come together uh, for that to happen. There's a reason that only five champions has happened five times Mm -hmm. in the history of the sport. Like That is a really, really tall order. Um, But yeah, this team certainly has a chance to uh, at least tie or even set a new record uh, with six champions. That That is a possibility, and I don't think it's a far-fetched possibility. Again, if Carter Storacci uh, and the leg hold up and your four number one mm-hmm. seeds all win, that, that gets you five, and then you're looking at can yeah. either Bo Bartlett uh, reverse the Big Ten finals against Jesse Mendez, a kid he beat earlier in the season, uh, and or can Mitchell Messenbrink you know, come out on top against, uh, if he gets to the finals against likely mm-hmm. a former teammate of his in Keegan O'Toole. And, you know, again, is there a chance of those things happening? For sure. Uh, so, you know, the 10 All-Americans to me is 
uh, a very achievable. Again, not not a given. You got to see how right. Carter uh, does hold up. You got to see how Aaron uh, performs. And listen, mm -hmm. you, you know, Braden and Tyler, uh, they're both true freshmen. Like it, it, yes. anytime you have a true freshman, again, I don't think you can be shocked uh, that it's absolutely stunning if they don't end up on the the podium. But I think going in, Penn State is certainly expecting that all ten of these guys will at least uh, get mm -hmm. on the podium. And I think Penn State, you know, firmly believes that they'll have uh, at least six and could have as many as nine uh, in the NCAA finals. As far as the scoring record is concerned, yes. again, that is a tall order. That that one seventy has stood for twenty five years, and yes. it really hasn't been challenged. I mean, it's not like somebody has gotten to one sixty eight or one sixty seven. I mean, I, it, it has mm -hmm. kind of stood alone. Uh, I do think Penn State will at least challenge it and threaten it. Um, yes. uh, certainly, if they get ten All Americans and they get, you know, let's just say five in the finals and four mm -hmm. that win it, they're going to be in the neighborhood. It's going to come down then to bonus points. And listen, with this lineup and with what we just saw them do at the Big Ten tournament, yes. I mean, can they get enough pins, technical falls, and major decisions to make a real run at this? For sure. Um, you know, and, and interestingly, that Iowa team, uh, it was top-heavy. I mean, they had six in the finals, which is also yep. – an NCAA record, and then the five champions, which is also an NCAA record. Yes. But it wasn't – and then they had a fifth and a sixth, and then the other two guys who did not place were not all Americans, both finished in the, right. uh, with three wins, uh, at least three wins in the, uh, the tournament. Well, Penn State can certainly match uh, in terms of the number of finalists, champions, and mm -hmm. surpass the All-Americans, and then it just comes down to bonus points – and what's interesting is that 97 team for Iowa put up a lot of bonus points, but it wasn't, uh, you know, from the quarterfinals in, they did not put up a lot of bonus points. They they got some mm -hmm. pins early, they got some pins and wrestlebacks, and then they uh, got, a, I think, just two technical falls, and they did rack yes. up a lot of major decisions. I think when you look at this Penn State team, and again, you just look at what happened with Aaron Nagao and Tyler Kasak both getting pins in their third-place bouts, at the yeah. Big Ten tournament. I mean, I'm not saying that this necessarily guarantees that you're going to get a pin barrage from those guys at the NCAA mm -hmm. tournament, but certainly up and down this lineup, you would not be surprised if through the first two rounds, Penn State has, you know, 10 to maybe as many as 15 bonus point victories. Well, if they do that, and again, everybody, let's just say everybody wrestles to their seed. That includes Starachi as a nine seed. But, mm -hmm. you know, you have four guys uh, that win titles to their seed, six guys in the finals, which would be to the seed. I mean, if everything just held true and you got, let's say, 15 bonus point wins uh, in the yeah. tournament I'm talking about, which yeah. is certainly possible with this team, you're going to be right there. You're going to be in the hunt yes. uh, for that scoring record. So – Certainly nothing guaranteed. There's a lot of things that have to break your way, and this mm -hmm. team will have to uh, you know, wrestle the best it has all season, which is saying something. But since 2016, that is what Kale Sanderson's teams have done, is save their best wrestling for the NCAA championships. So if this team does do that, yes, they are going to be at least in the neighborhood and I think uh, threatening that uh, Iowa record from 97. I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly about the 10 out of 10 All-Americans. Nothing is a given because this is the highest point of the wrestling season. But it's at, out of all the arguments you could make for or against it, it, it's difficult to make ones against Penn State actually getting 10 out of 10 here. But in this case, the scoring record, 170, like you mentioned, what that Iowa team was able to accomplish here. I, I think that... The difference, the reason why I lean that Penn State could actually do it, that the, the odds are more in their favor as opposed to not, Jeff, is because of the three-point takedown. Penn State, and Penn State's just a naturally offensive team. Carter Starachi can tech ball you, tech ball anybody. Aaron Brooks, yes, your pins are nice, and you get that additional bonus point here. But Mitchell Messenbrink is a scoring machine. Levi Haynes can be a scoring machine. Greg Kirkfleet has shown he can do that. Some are better than others offensively, but that element, the three-point takedown, 
makes this a little more favorable for this Penn State team than a, as opposed to years past. Yeah, no, there's no question about that, Zach. And I think, you know, with, with Aaron Brooks and Greg Kirkfleet, you almost uh, chalk up that you're going to have, uh, you know, let's say they both wrestle 10 bouts and, and do win national mm -hmm. titles at those weights. You almost uh, chalk up that there's going to be at least five bonus point wins there between yes. the two and, you know, very likely seven or eight. I mean, they just, I mean, Aaron Brooks has been able to bonus point everybody he's wrestled this year. I mean, the only bout that he didn't get bonus points all year was Zach Glazier in the dual meet. Uh, it was a 5-1 decision, right. but he just turned around and beat Glazier by technical fall at the uh, Big Ten that. tournament. Yeah. So, you know, Brooks getting bonus points against anybody and everybody is not a surprise. And really, Greg Kirkfleet, the same thing. I'm not guaranteeing you that uh, either of them are going to run the table with bonus point wins, but Mm -hmm. You know, you're certainly not going to be surprised if they both get three or four uh, bonus point wins along the way. And again, uh, you know, I think you, Mitchell Messenbrink, certainly you'd expect in the first couple of rounds is going mm -hmm. to get some bonus points for you. Levi Haynes in the first couple of rounds, you're expecting to get some bonus points. And again, between wrestlebacks and, uh, and the later rounds even, I, mm -hmm. I think, you know, guys like Braden Davis and Tyler Kasak and Bernie Truax is another guy that is certainly capable of getting some bonus points along the way. I mean, really up and down the lineup, there's not a guy there that, you know, you're not expecting to get at least a bonus point win right. uh, somewhere along the way here at the NCAA tournament. And so, yeah, I, I think Penn State has a really a good shot at it. Again, a lot of things have to come together and there's not much margin for error if you're pursuing a record like that. But we just saw this team surpass the lofty expectations that it had at the Big Ten tournament. So, yeah. again, all it, it really needs to do is, uh, is meet its expectations at the NCAA tournament to have a real shot here at the scoring record. And they did that without Carter Storacci in the lineup. So you were able to score. And now I know it's the Big Ten Conference. You know, you're not factoring in the likes of what NC State can do in Oklahoma State, et cetera, Missouri, right? But at the Big Ten Championships, they met that 170-point mark without Carter Storacci. I know Flow Wrestling is projecting something in the neighborhood of between 130 and 140, but that's before... The, this is just purely on seeding and, and projections. The individual right. bouts themselves where bonus points are scored, that is what we're factoring in here and trying to do the math to say that Penn State. I lean that it's actually over 50%. You know, if you had to put yes or no, I would say it leans yes that Penn State can break the scoring record here. Yeah, I mean, I, I really think they have a, a great shot at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and... You know, we'll we'll have a pretty good idea, obviously, by the end of the day Friday, how realistic that shot yeah. is. But um, you know, it, it, coming off of the performance that this team just gave at the Big Ten tournament, uh, and again, given the track record throughout Kale's tenure, but in particular since 2016 of winning those semifinal and final bouts mm -hmm. at a remarkably consistent rate. Uh, it, yeah, if Penn State does kind of what it has done here uh, in recent years at the NCAA uh, championships in terms of its top end guys, um, again, uh, six or seven in the finals is certainly very much uh, in the realm of possibility. And, you know, getting four or five champions is, uh, is again, not an unrealistic uh, goal or possibility for the program. That's what it will take. That many champions, that many play, that many placements in the finals, and ten out of ten All Americans if they are going to do it. But let's jump back into the individual weight classes themselves, starting picking it up with one fifty seven and Levi Haynes. That's coming up next here on Locked On Nittany Lions. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week we're picking one team that stands out a team that's pushed it further than the rest. And just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. How about the Utah State Aggies? They are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance against New Mexico, giving them their first outright Mountain West title in program history. They say win life, go Rogue. And that's exactly what the Aggies have done here. 
take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. That's NissanUSA.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can just plug into your existing TV and that it provides access to millions of movies and TV shows, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV lets you dive into everything, game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date with everything in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV, you should trust me on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. That's amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. The Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown has returned. It is now available on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shea will break down their bracket and discuss everything you need to know to fill out a winning bracket and prepare for this year's NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament, the Field of 68. Find the Locked On Basketball Breakdown Bracket Breakdown now on Locked On College Basketball, wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Jeff is going to be calling all three days of the wrestling tournament out in Kansas City, beginning at Thursday, continuing to Friday, and going into the championships, the titles themselves, on Saturday. You can stream it and listen to it live at gopsusports.com. Let's pick it back up because we still got six weight classes to go through. 157, Levi Haynes. This is one of those ones where Penn State has the heavy favorite, right? Levi Haynes is the number one seed. He's one of the four here. And I, I like this bracket for him just because he is that, that heavy favorite. But Jeff, there are 10 all Americans at the one former all Americans at the 157 pound weight class. So it's not like this is going to be overwhelmingly easy. If this was anybody else, I don't know that they could handle it, but because it's Levi Haynes, I still feel good about Haynes bringing back a title to state college. Yeah, I, I do too, but boy, I tell you, whoever wins this 157-pound uh, weight class, as you alluded to, uh, is going to earn it. And you look, even you know, in the second round, uh, mm -hmm. Levi potentially could face Brock Mahler, who is a terrific wrestler for yeah. Missouri, like really, really good. Uh, and then you, know, you go even to the quarterfinals, and you're looking at, uh, you know, either Peyton Robb or uh, Will Lewan or possibly even uh, Chase Soldate out of the uh, the Big Ten. Yep. But, uh, you know, Luan has been right there. I mean, they've now met three times previously. There was the one one-point bout mm -hmm. in the Big Ten uh, mm -hmm. dual meet this year. And then there's been two overtime wins for Levi. I mean, it's not like... Um, victory in the championships at Big yeah, Ten. I mean, yeah. Luan has been right there every time. Uh, and Peyton Robb obviously is uh, is a terrific wrestler in his uh, in his own right. So yeah, there is it, it is not an easy path. Uh, but with the way Levi is wrestling right now, Zach, it's it's just uh, it'll yeah. take something special to beat him. Now, are some of these guys capable of delivering something special? You bet. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, Levi's going to have to be on on top of his game. Um, you know, if he does, uh, I, I know a lot of people are, uh, thinking that he and Meyer Shapiro from, uh, Cornell could, mm -hmm. could meet in the finals and that'll be as highly anticipated a matchup as, uh, yeah. as we'll have probably if that occurs. Uh, although Ja'Cory Teamer, of course, of Arizona state is the two seed. So, uh, that'd be, uh, Teamer and Shapiro could be a great semi-final matchup, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I obviously love Levi's chances, but again, mm -hmm. from the second round in, it's it is not going to be an easy path. 
right? And that's just the top half of the bracket. And I, I'm I'm eager to see, right, is he going to face Michael Blockus, who disappointed at Big Tens, right? He was upset early on. But then there's those names, as you mentioned, Shapiro. Uh, Ed Scott, who's the four seed out of NC yeah. State. That That's a possibility in, in the semifinals. So there's 10 former All-Americans at 157 pounds. It will not disappoint. But because of how talented Levi Haynes is, I'm still confident that he is going to win a title here at this weight class. Yep, I, I'm I'm with you again. He's just uh, obviously very special. 165 pounds. Mitchell Messenbrink is the two seed, and Messenbrink did himself so many favors by winning that Big Ten title over Dean Hamity, and that was one for the ages. That one will go down in history, and people will, who watched it and like yourself, you know, called it, will remember that one for a long time. But Mitchell Messenbrink set himself up nicely. I thought he was going to be the three seed or the four seed and have to run into uh, a David Carr, a guarantee, because Keegan O'Toole assumed that we assumed that he was going to be the number one seed all along, and he is. But yeah. David Carr is the four seed. So Mitchell Messenbrink, one way or another, does not have to face either of those guys in the semifinals, one of them is going to eliminate each other, and Mitchell Messenbrink has a very favorable path because of what he did at Big Tens to be the number two seed here at NCAAs. And now it, it feels like he is going to meet one of them in the NCAA championship as opposed to the semifinals. Yeah, and listen, I think Julian Ramirez is really good. I think that that could be a really oh, yeah. entertaining semifinal bout, but. Uh, I, I'm with you. I just I think Mitchell Messenbrink, David Carr, and Keegan O'Toole are the three that are. Uh, and, mm -hmm. I, and I know Ramirez <laughs> won earlier in the season over Carr. I get it. I, I'm yes. just telling you when they're all resting at their best, I, I think those are the three uh, that, that stand out this weight class. And again, Ramirez already proved that he's capable of uh, mm -hmm. of winning. I mean, he, he did win over Carr, so I'm not sitting here telling you that it's uh, right. you know there's no chance. Uh, that Messenbrink doesn't get to the finals, but uh, I'm with you. I really like his chances, and I do think it'll be him and O'Toole in the finals. And there's just so many great storylines to to that one. Of course, O'Toole uh, wrestled for Messenbrink's uh, father, John, yeah. uh, in high school. They were teammates, and and obviously know each other very well. Uh, and they both have, I mean, they both go uh, and right. both have kind of funky styles. I, I think that bout has a chance. Be, it's one of those where sometimes two guys know each other so well that uh, they, you know, it ends up being just a, a four-one score because neither can figure the other one out. I think, and I it could yes. be wrong. It could end up being a four-one bout, but I think both of these guys love the sport enough and know each other well enough and are confident in what they bring to the table. Like, I think that score is going to end up being similar to what you saw with the Mess and Brink Hamity score, where both wrestlers are in double digits. And, you know, whoever wins, it's it's going to be wildly entertaining. And I think both of those guys will give a, a genuine uh, handshake and uh, pat to the back yeah. of the uh, the one that wins it. Uh, and, and we'll, you know, the champion will console uh, the guy that loses it, if it's right. what we see. And again, both have tough paths. It, it's not that I think there's anything automatic here uh, in this weight class. Again, Ramirez is really good, um, but I think Messenbrink is, has just, uh, again, taken that next step to being elite. Uh, and O'Toole just seems to have Carr's number. Again, it, I'm yeah. not saying there's no way Carr could win uh, that mm -hmm. matchup in the semis, but I really think we're heading to O'Toole versus Messenbrink. And uh, I, for one, am, uh, am ready to sign up to watch that one. And the only reason O'Toole would be the favorite in the hypothetical matchup is just because of the experience. This is Mitchell Messenbrink's first season at Penn State, his second season uh, wrestling collegiately, and O'Toole is a former NCAA champion here. But Mitchell Messenbrink, we, for the, the, go back and watch the first episodes we ever did for this season, Jeff, because everybody, so that everyone can attest to what we said, we always had Metzenbrink in the top four as a wrestler who was going to make the semifinals one way or another at 165 and was in the conversation with the likes of Carr and O'Toole all along. Yeah, I and I just think, again, I, I, I will be surprised. Most of these weight classes, I'm like, eh, from the second round in, mm -hmm. it's not going to be shocking. Yeah. This one I will be 
very surprised anyway if Messenbrink isn't at least in the semifinals. And then let's go to 174, Carter Starachi. Well, the injury defaults, we know at the Big Ten titles, and we talked about go watch back to part one and our thoughts, final thoughts on everything that happened that transpired at Big Tens, and then the ramification, good ramifications from it, good conversation with Coach, and now he's here at NCAAs, but he's the number nine seed. And why this is so interesting, and Carter said, he's like, hey, I'll do an ultimate warrior challenge where I wrestle each individual wrestler and I will take each, every one of them out. I'll wrestle all 32 of the other ones. Heck, I'll wrestle the pigtail and go through that. But when he mentioned the pigtail, we were, you know, okay, this was even before the seeds were released, Jeff, that yeah. Carter was, was saying that he wants to take the number one wrestler in the bracket on early as possible right out of the gate. That was his point. Well, he's going to get to do just that because Makai Lewis and him are now on a crash course for the quarterfinal, not the championship, the quarterfinal, where, I look, I think it's a shame that Makai Lewis, as decorated as he is in the veteran sport, as a veteran in the sport of wrestling, he's going to have to go through wrestlebacks when he faces Starachi in that one versus nine seed matchup. Yeah, I, and listen, for me, Zach, this just comes down to, to how... Uh, how well can Carter wrestle with the leg and how does the leg hold up? Yes. Because if the leg holds up and, and Carter is able to make the adjustments that, that he needs to, uh, in terms of his approach, I, I'm talking about, right. I, I mean, Carter is the best wrestler in, in the, uh, the weight class. Uh, you're just hoping he gets a, a chance to go out and prove it. And yeah, it's a brutal draw for Makai Lewis, uh, you know, to, to as the one seed to have uh, Starachi in your half of the bracket in the quarterfinals. But um, again, nothing's given here with Sirachi just because you're not going to know uh, until mm -hmm. you see it, uh, how everything holds up and, you know, how how effectively he's truly able to wrestle. Uh, and again, I, I have my guess and I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that everything yeah. goes well, but you, you just have to see it. And it is... It's a big unknown right now. Uh, I mean, I know Carter's uh, talking a good game, and I'm I'm hoping that it, that he's accurate, that everything holds up, and he goes yeah. out and and you know does what he does against uh, all comers. I just I, until you see it hold up over three days, you just don't know. And I think there's at least a, a part of you, if you're a Penn State fan, that's going to be holding your breath through every bout until you get to the uh, the end of it here with Carter. And then you have Shane Griffith as the four seed, right? They, all these hypothetical matchups that are going to be high profile and, and the best of the best in this 174 bracket are going to happen outside. If they're going to happen, they're happening outside of the championship that's on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how well Shane's holding up either. Obviously, right. After big ends. Yeah. More forfeited at uh, the conference tournament. So uh, you know, but listen, that's part of the equation. I mean, every year you have wrestlers mm -hmm. who are uh, dinged up and, and you know, legitimately injured and, you know, yep. wrestling through and battling through. And we've seen a bunch of them go on and win titles, but we've also seen some guys that have had to check out early because, you know, the, a shoulder or a knee or uh, yep. whatever just isn't holding up as as they had hoped. So, uh, again, it's it's just one of those until – you see how it goes. You're just not going to know with any certainty. 184, 197, 285. That will cap off the preview for the NCAA championships out in Kansas City. And those three weight classes featuring Bernie Truax, Aaron Brooks, and Greg Kirkley are all coming up next. And today's episode is also sponsored by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. It's that simple. That's 200 bucks back in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 is a winner. 200, back, 200 bucks to use on point spreads. Money lines, totals, you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on. That is fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops till they cut the nets down.
The Locked On Podcast Network is making history. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it can be found. It is available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. Find Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Remember, if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to keep up with what Jeff does outside of wrestling coverage, you can listen to him daily on 98.7 FM in Happy Valley, in State College, Fox Sports Radio, in the local area. If you want to stream it, 987thefox.com. And in this final segment, let's wrap it up. Bernie Truex at 184, Aaron Brooks at 197, Greg Kirkfleet at 285. The 184-pound weight class, Bernie Truax, number six seed going into this. And while I wouldn't say that, again, Bernie Truax isn't going to be the favorite in this bracket, but Jeff, just looking at it, I'm getting a difficult read here because we talked about it earlier saying that, hey, Bernie Truax shouldn't go unnoticed here. He has the opportunity to contend for an NCAA title. He's a multi-time NCAA All-American finalist here at multiple different weight classes. So Truax, you know, has that he's a veteran of the sport. He knows what he's doing at this point in time as a graduate transfer. But it is so it it's kind of like it's starting to shape up to me like 125 where almost anything could happen here. Almost anything could happen. I mean, for example, you have a Trey Munoz as a four seat, just to put it into perspective, right? Everything, I don't want to say everything's all over the place, but Parker Kakaizen is the number one seed, deservedly so. He's undefeated. He's very talented in his own right. Your number two seed is Isaiah Salazar, who Bernie Truex was so close to beating at Big Ten, came down a sudden victory. And don't ignore the score itself. Watch the bout and how close Truex was. But that's what I'm saying. These wrestlers are all neck and neck, and anybody could emerge when the dust settles. Yeah, and it's it's interesting, uh, Zach, because in the second round, potentially, if mm-hmm. if the seeds hold, uh, he'll actually get the only wrestler who beat Salazar this season again in the second round of the tournament in Colton Hawks from Missouri. Uh, yeah. So again, this is another weight where, while I think Bernie Truax really does have an excellent chance of getting to the finals, uh, and you know a potential rematch with Kakaizen from the uh, NWCA All Star Meet, uh, which yep. Kakaizen won, and Kakaizen just. It does look like he's taken his game to another level this year, uh, and it will take something really special, I think, to beat uh, Kakai's. And to me, he is is the clear favorite. Right. Uh, but if Truex does get by the, the second round, and again, I, he's another one that just, I think, is wrestling with uh, a great deal of confidence and, mm-hmm. and is wrestling his best of the season right now. Uh, if he does get uh, into that... Uh, quarterfinal matchup with Dustin Plott. I, I think that is a really intriguing matchup. Uh, and yeah. I like Truax's chances there in a rematch with Salazar, with the, this uh, coaching staff working with Truax to make the adjustments in the couple of weeks. Again, I, I really like the chance. So it's another weight where it's like, eh, I could see him getting upset in the second round. Like, I don't think that'd be just stunning. Uh, but I can also see Bernie Truax getting to the finals and and getting another shot at Kakaizen uh, as well. So it's another one of those ways where, from Penn State's perspective, it's just you know about taking it uh, one bout at a time. But I, I really do like just kind of where Bernie's at right now with his game uh, and mm-hmm. with his head heading into the the NCAA tournament. On to 197 pounds, Aaron Brooks, another one of those number one seeds for Penn State. And, and like Parker Kakaizen at 184, Aaron Brooks all alone, taking his game to the next level if that's even possible, but somehow Aaron Brooks is still able to capitalize. And he is going after his fourth NCAA title. COVID you know, turned him away, that one opportunity, but now he's a three-time. And him and Carter are looking to become the first. I thought this was interesting. And you know, do, doing a little bit of history check before going into this, he, Aaron and Carter are chasing the first opportunities for four-time national champions in Penn State hinge history individually, individually right? So yep. you have as, as small as a class as this is, you know, small as a group with the four-time individual champions themselves, I figured there's got to be at least one or two Penn State Nittany Lions. No, Brooks, 
and Sirachi would stand all alone here if and when they're able to do this here. But Brooks at 197, it, this class is strong, but it's down to him and Trent Hively. These two, it's Aaron Brooks, and then it's Trent Hively, and then it's everybody else. I, I really don't expect anything outside of Brooks and Hively, another rematch between these two in the championship at 197. Yeah, I, I think that's right, Zach. I mean, at this one, it just, uh, uh, again, we've seen crazy things happen over the years, yeah. but boy, it sure feels like, uh, yes, Hidley and Brooks are kind of destined here to meet in, in the finals. And, you know, Aaron Brooks, I think, is, uh, at least in my mind right now, Zach, the, uh, the favorite to win uh, the Hodge mm -hmm. Trophy. Again, he's uh, mm -hmm. won every bout. Uh, but one by bonus points this year. And that one, right. you know, again, was a 5-1 decision that he then, uh, in the second meeting, uh, turned into a technical fall against uh, Zach Leisure of Iowa. So, to me, Brooks goes into the NCAA tournament as the uh, favorite uh, to win the Hodge Trophy, and I think he'll come out of the tournament uh, having it uh, firmly locked up. I, I just think Aaron Brooks, the way he's wrestling right now, uh, you know, I, I think he's one of the best pound for pound wrestlers in the world, uh, not yeah. just in the uh, the American collegiate scene right now. And, and just th this class overall is so interesting to me. There are so many names that I recognize from covering Pennsylvania high school wrestling that yeah. Aaron Brooks could see. I mean, Luke Stout, to name one of them, Max Stout, the you know, the brother, Trent Hidley was one and he won gold medals at, at Mifflin County High School and was heavily recruited by Penn State but ultimately as we've seen when they were both at 184 Aaron Brooks has always held the advantage whether that was at collegiate wrestling or in freestyles right Brooks has always had the edge over Hidley to this point here now I will say this there isn't anybody that threatens Brooks uh, maybe you know it'll be interesting to see a possible matchup between him and Michael Beard since Beard was at Penn State once upon a time, now at Lehigh. But yeah. I don't want to say that Hydley's a given to get to the championship because he will have to go through Tanner Sloan, who is the three seed. Yeah, although I just, again, I think Hydley, uh, uh, Sloan is very good. And and yes, it mm -hmm. wouldn't be shocking. I mean, it wouldn't be out of this world. I yeah, that's my point. Yeah. Saw, but uh, I just, I think Hydley's a better wrestler right now. Uh, and I I think it'll be Hidley and, and Brooks, and I just think Brooks, uh, again, is uh, is wrestling as well, if not better than anybody else in the country at any weight right now. And uh, it just, I just don't see anybody being able to beat him. And we're in the home stretch here with 285 heavyweight as Greg Kirkfleet is one of those other number one seeds. He's the final number one seed here. And this is an intriguing weight class from the fact of, yes, of course, there, there's talent across the board. Greg Kirkfleet, heavyweight wrestler, heavy favorite going into this one and should win. You know, he's always moved his way up. I thought it was interesting, Jeff, that he was the fourth place at Big Tens, then third place and second place, and then first place. So it, only, uh, it almost seems a little storybook here as it was Gable Stevenson and then it was Mason Paris, and now it's Greg Kirkfleet's cat, uh, class to lose. But I am so intrigued by the hypothetical finals matchup between himself and the number two seed, Younger Bastida of Iowa State. I, I can't but help think that uh, outside of Brooks and Trent Hidley for, you know, what, the fourth, fifth, sixth time, right, in, yeah. in, in collegiate wrestling, that this one I am circling between Bastida and Kirkfleet here as one of the most uh, anticipated matchups that I want to see at the championships across the board from 125 all the way down to 285. Yeah, Bastida was very impressive against Wyatt Hendrickson in that Big mm -hmm. 12 uh, final and obviously is is really dangerous and really good. I I think going in that Greg is is just at a little different level right now, even from Bastida or, or anybody else in this weight. But, uh, yeah. yeah, Bastida was definitely an attention getter uh, with the, mm -hmm. that win over Hendrickson. And, and Hendrickson is certainly a guy that I think is capable of being right there in the mix. Uh, and Colton Schultz, uh, you know, yes. if, if, I, I think is capable of of catching fire here and being a dangerous uh, wrestler as well. But going in, yes, I think this is Greg Kirkfleet's uh, weight class to lose this year. And I'm glad you brought up Schultz because once upon a time, not too long ago, Schultz was in the NCAA championships against yes. Gable Stevenson. Yeah, no, and and he just does. Uh, 
you know, dropped off a little bit. Hasn't wrestled a whole lot this year. I think he only has no. like 10 matches under his belt coming mm -hmm. out of the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, so, uh, you know, again, that's a dangerous potential semifinal matchup. But uh, until you get to the semis, I just uh, – I think Greg is, is going to roll here. And, uh, and really, I think Penn State will be looking to get bonus points in the first three rounds here, quarterfinals included, from, uh, from Mr. Kirkley. Yeah, I think Kirk, there's just so much distance between himself and anybody else that I look at. Yeah, hypothetical matchups, could he face you know, Corey Day out of Binghamton? Uh, there's a chance that he could see Nick Feldman for another time. You know, the dual meet, Big Tens, and then here at NCAAs. But again, there's just such a gap between himself and the rest of anybody else that uh, Colton Schultz makes it interesting in a hypothetical semifinal. Wyatt Hendrickson is all the way down on the other side of the bracket as the three seed, and that's yeah. why it's just, you know, those matchups are all well and good, but it's Kirkfleet versus Bastida because when I look at Kirkfleet versus Schultz, they are two different types of wrestlers. Kirkfleet is just so athletic for the heavyweight class. Schultz is more of your, you're more of your typical heavyweight yeah. type of wrestler where a defensive, right, is able to grind you down over three periods. But Kirkfleet's just so athletic. It's almost like it's unheard. I don't want to say unheard of, but all these other matchups at the 285 class he just owns them because of that speed, agility, athleticism that can't be duplicated across the board. Basita could do it. Hendrickson maybe, but not anybody else really. Yeah. No, I, I just – and Greg has taken his game to another level this season, even from where yeah. he was at a year ago, which was at a very high level and in a very good place. But, uh, again, Basita has obviously made tremendous strides as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And is you know a guy that has that athleticism and kind of brings the uh, the quickness of the ninety seven pound uh, weight class with him up to to heavyweight here. So uh, you know I do think that would be a, a very intriguing finals. Uh, it's just that uh, with with what's there in collegiate wrestling this season, uh, until somebody actually beats Greg Kerfleet, I'm I'm not buying that uh, that anybody. Uh, truly uh, can, or or at least that anybody will here at the NCAA tournament. And that'll do it. A full NCAA tournament preview here on Locked on Nittany Lions. The voice of Penn State Wrestling, Jeff Byers. Can't thank him enough for helping me out here. If you want to listen to his live play-by-play -play coverage all the way through at the NCAA championships in Kansas City, it is over the course of Thursday, March 21st, all the way through Saturday, March 23rd, beginning at 11.40 a.m. Eastern time with the first session continuing in the evening with the second session picking up Friday, 11.40 a.m. Eastern time at the third session, fourth session in the evening that Friday night. And then depending on what Penn State wrestlers are still in wrestlebacks, that will pick up at 11.40 a.m. Eastern time on Saturday as well. And then the championships, you will be live at 6.40 Eastern time for those title matches or whatever Penn State wrestlers make it all the way there. If you want to stream that, if you want to listen to it live, go PSUsports.com. Jeff, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Taking time out of your busy schedule, safe travels, and can't I, I'm looking forward so much to all the wrestling action, but from your perspective there. So thank you. Thanks, Zach. Yep, definitely looking forward to it. This is uh, This is my Christmas morning, so I can hardly wait as well.